All right, Zeke, talk to me about her story. What the fuck is this game? <clears throat> okay. This is, uh, uh, you, you played this because it won some awards at uh, the Game Awards, which we. First we time I had ever heard of it, by the way. Was the, the Game Awards? Nominated like me too. Five times. Yeah, it, yeah. Won, uh, it won Best Narrative and Best Performance uh, yep. by the woman named uh, Viva, Viva. Viva Seifert, I think is how you pronounce yeah. that. So, what the fuck is this game, Zeke? You said you're going to check it out. And he did. All right. This game is just, it's this, the, uh, the videos of this, of this lady. And it's only this lady throughout the, the, the entire game is just, is just this, except you have to search, uh, through, it's like a cold case, basically. Um, but did you just see, what did the subtitle say? No, no. I just realized, I thought, I thought this game was different. I've seen this game. Oh, okay. Yeah, Elo played um, this game. That's why you've probably yeah. seen it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you search through a database of... It's like a cold case file. And you search through the database of their videos by keywords. So if you hear the word mirror, you search mirror, and then it shows you videos. But here's the thing. It only shows you five, and that's all you can get. Even if there's more, like, if you type in uh, uh, Simon, you get, like, 27 video results, but you can only see the first five in a row because the other ones that are down further, they're further in the timeline would reveal too much of the, too much of the, uh, the plot. So you search Simon, you watch that video and then you search, uh, uh, I don't know. Murder is the first thing that they give. They give it to you. Like when you open the game, it's like okay. murders in the search bar already for you. So you get four videos, and you like did it. Oh, you look at these videos, and then you look and oh, Simon did it. Look up Simon. Then you oh, Kamir did it. Look that up, and so on and so forth. Um, and you kind of uh, um, the story gets revealed to you, like the event, the the crime, backstories, what what have you. And the f I mean, it's it's pretty cool. And it was it was really fun to play with my buddy Yippy Skippy because we were playing like we were detectives and stuff, and you know <laughs> we were acting out like oh god damn it years on the force and did it you know or being in character or whatever nice. it was a lot of fun um, doing you, like improv stuff. So you finished <laughs> and, it, and that's you know what that's the that's the weird thing about it. When I finished it, I had no idea I like I'd come to the conclusion because. See those? Okay, you see that database there with yeah, the greens and the and the and the browns or the maroons or whatever. Yes. The greens are videos I've seen. The other ones are videos I haven't seen. You can go through the game without seeing all the videos. Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah. And you can come to the conclusion of the game without seeing all the videos. So is the game like getting to the conclusion with as few videos as possible or something? Like what? Nope. What is? Nope. That's that's why I said it. I was like, uh, when we got to a point because I didn't want it spoiled, but we got to a point I was like. So what the fuck? And then people were like, blah. And I was like, oh, that was it? Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> but you can definitely, I mean, you can go all you want, go all out, search all the all the keywords you can think of. And we had like a list. We wrote down, I swear to God, during the entire game, we wrote down like a hundred different keywords to search. I would need to get drunk, but this seems like an way better than I thought it would be. Like when they, the way they portrayed it, just with the images, I had no idea that it was like as engaging as you, as you're saying it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, she's a, a decent actress and stuff. I don't she know. Won, about, like, she won best, uh, <laughs> best performance. Right. Best I, performance. I don't want to <laughs> like hate on the game at all. You know, I'm not generally a hater, but Zeke, can you tell me something here? As someone who's spent some time in the game, sure. I watched my buddy Elo play this game a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think he was the lead detective, but like there was, you know, there was like the woman would act and she would kind of be her, you know, kind of snarky self. And mm -hmm. then there'd be this other guy that was kind of, and they get to the British guy and he'd be like, oh yeah, so what exactly were you doing? Like, there's no guy. What are you talking about? It's like, it's like a British. Nope. Okay. Maybe it wasn't this game. Then. No, there was I, like, I was watching. Been. This you game were, and like everyone was acting just fine, but then there's this, there was this one guy that was clearly overacting. There's like, one. There's one person in the game. You're probably thinking of that no, no, Tesla no. effect, the Tex Murphy adventure game, Z or Co. Because Elo did also play that, and I think that is more in line of what you're saying. Is that it? Because it remember, also has FMV I, in it. It must have been a different game then. Okay, good. Yep. Okay, so y'all know what I'm talking about then. I'm not crazy here. No, nope, it's okay. just it's it's cold oh. case videos. Oh, he, you're of, thinking of contradiction. 
That's what you're thinking of. There you According go. According to chat. It's it's a cold case file with Thank only you. this person in the videos. All right. What do you? Right. How much is it? And is it worth? The it buy? was like three dollars and fifty cents when I bought it. Like right, nice. I bought it directly after she yeah. won or he the game or she won the award it's six bucks regardless it's six yeah. bucks it was on sale yeah, because all games all games on the game awards or during the game awards were on sale oh okay uh so yeah it's six dollars to pick up how long uh, how long did you play it. for um let's see for like six hours okay and then what what is this mousetrap debacle thing that you oh <laughs> <laughs> why do you have a mousetrap um, I have a mousetrap. I just, I still have them left over. Um, I don't remember what the reason was. Oh, it's because we were trying to defuse a bomb and I blamed it on him for us exploding. And, uh, so then he I said, I want to mousetrap you. And I was playing my, my, my fucking outlandish pimp character sweetness. Oh, okay. And, uh, he fucked up the bomb. So I was like, I'm going to fuck his dead. He's like, no, no, no. Snap. And then I was like, he, and he, oh. the, he said, it was like, all right, I'll let you snap me if someone like subscribes right now. I was like, "Fucking don't do that, man!" Like I told him that after. I was like, "You don't fucking have to do that." Yeah, that's he did dirty. Just live on the cast, uh, and he was like, "Okay," and then like five people in a row, and I was like, "All right, that's you. That's one ear," and then like another person was like, "That's your other ear," and then it's like three more. I was like, "That's your third ear." So I snap him, <laughs> and then just to be fair, I let him snap me on the nose. How bad did that hurt? It fucking fucking sucked ass. What do you think? <laughs> it made him it gave me a blood blister on the end of my nose for like it still have a little bit left. Uh, yep. <laughs> why did he? He should have flipped it around so we could like see it. No, no. I, I you'll see. I I'm aware of the camera. Okay. Oh, he changes it. Okay, here it is. Yep. I changed it. I turned his hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the reaction was so. It was a little bit of delayed stun, and then you realized what was going on. You're like the jackass of Twitch now, Z. This is a recurring thing you'll have to do. Oh, God. That sucks. It did. It was It was just a spur-of-the-moment thing. I saw I saw a trap line there, and I was like, oh, shit. I should fucking snap my friend. <laughs> how, uh, how drunk were you at this point? Not very, actually. Oh, okay. That's good. No, uh, he actually <laughs> got drunker than I did. Nice. Nice. <laughs> but, yeah, dude, I got to tell you, man, that... That fucking keep talking. That game's a pretty of, good game. One of the best co-op games I've ever played. Have you played that, Jericho? Or co? No, I haven't. I watched it, or what was it? PAX Prime? Yeah, PAX Prime. You, really, you and Sonya really need to play that game. It's it's the bomb defusal game, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've watched people play it, and I, I guess there's, you know, a, a tutorial because I could not understand how yep. he would. It ramps start. up very smartly. Okay. Right, so I watched the... Uh, Just you know, the, seriously, if you're going to do it, go into it dark. Go yes. into it without oh, knowing anything. It's so right. much more fun that way. Yep. Okay, and then all right. Yeah, I it's it's it looked really clever and, and it was definitely one of those like different games, kinda offbeat, but uh I definitely should try it. I you should. I don't know why I haven't. Do you ever check it out, Co? I have not played it yet. No. Okay. No. It's uh it's it's fun times for sure. Hey, let me know. Yeah. I'll be your guy if you want. The other cool thing too is that people love watching it. Uh, so it's it's a good stream game for that. Uh, people will just and it's, fucking come out of nowhere. And it's fucking perfect over like a voice chat. Yep, it is beautiful. I had I had one of the best times playing with uh, Shannon Z Killer. Yeah, I watched you two get fucking drunk, <laughs> or at least she got we real got, drunk. <laughs> yeah, we got drunk, and also <laughs> she just that I means she's just really fun to play with because yeah. she's very very like okay now, and she really <laughs> like. Is, Gets intense about it. No. Yeah. Does it have three wires? Okay. Looking it up. All right. It's fucking awesome. Yep. Yep. Uh, Zeke, anything else on your channel? What What else did you play on Indie Sunday? Was, was it just those two? Just, just those two this week because my buddy wanted to come over and I said, okay. Gotcha. Cool stuff. Yep. Co, what about you besides uh, that game we talked about at the beginning, which I don't want to talk about anymore? <laughs> what else have you been playing? Uh, let's see. Went back to Fallout 4 for a little bit. Um, that was fun. I mean, it, that's it's kind of fun just running around that game with nothing to do. I just did, I just was drinking beers and we were running around and shooting shit. It was nice. a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm looking um, at your past also, broadcast. It's literally it's, just Xenoblade. All oh my god! <laughs> that's yeah, of, yeah. 
Go I think outside, Co. <laughs> I think I think I think I'm done. I mean, I think tomorrow is Bloodborne, and I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna shelf Zeno for now. For now, okay. I may go back and finish it someday. But um, and then I played today for the first time since Alpha, Rainbow Six Siege. Okay, yeah. Let's talk about this. What, I got to be honest, man. I I played it in Alpha, and I played it for a long time. Like, I played it for probably 20 hours. I had a good time with it. I was playing with people I like to play with. That was that Alpha where it was just, like, streamers and friends of streamers. So yeah. every time you didn't do a random game, it was just, like, people you knew, and it was a lot of fun and cool. Um, so I thought, and I actually said this on a previous Drop Frames, I thought I had played the game. I thought that was, like, you know, I thought I got a good gist of it and how it was, and it felt like Call of Duty with some cool tricks and stuff like that. So... I opened it up today, right? And I was just, you know, I actually just quit Xenoblade. I wasn't even planning on playing it today. I was like, I'm just going to try some Siege. Damned if I wasn't pretty impressed with how much it has covered. I was not prepared for how much it has changed. Um, from the, like, I didn't know you could pick, like, what, 10 plus different attackers and defenders and you could unlock a bunch of shit. I yeah. didn't even know about the NPC thing until you you talked about it last week. Um, I have to admit that that now that I've had a couple hours with it, I'm I'm much more interested in it, and I gotta say that uh, it it was a lot of fun today. It was a lot of fun. Were you playing with just by yourself, or were you just queuing solo? I was playing just by myself, and I queued up, and somehow I don't know if like can people follow you in games or something. But it got to the point where like most of my team knew who I was, so like we would start like playing the game, and like this guy kept on being like, "All right, let's win this for Co," and I'd be like, "Yeah." You know, let's, yeah, let's do it. You I know, think I you can. Doing. I think you so, can queue up at the same time, and there's enough, or not that many people. I, maybe that's completely wrong, but it's pretty easy to, to stream snipe people. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I gotta say, man, it, it's it's it made a lot more progress than I thought it did, but than I thought it would between alpha and now. And uh, now that I've spent a few hours in it, there's a ton of unlocks. There's a ton of weapon mods. There's a ton of maps to learn. There are like. It's it's bigger. It's bigger than I thought it would be. So it's it's really cool. I'm having a really good time with it. I'm Jericho, really you've been. Time. I'm going to be playing like right after this. I'm going back and playing some more. Nice, playing Jericho. You've been playing this as well, right? Yeah, I I I don't think it's my kind of game playing solo. There's uh not. It's a uh, definitely a voice com heavy game, and a lot of times you get into voice com empty games, which is you know uh, it's kind of standard for a lot of games. You got you got to build a culture around it, like. Counter Strike, even Overwatch doesn't have that many mics, so it's just tough to play solo, I think. But when I'm playing with like Tim the Tatman and Spoon, or I played with Goldie uh, last uh, couple days ago, it was just like that. This game is inherently amazing, just to kind of kind of role play, but at the same time, like take it seriously. So you're just like you know you're breaching through a door, somebody gets shot, they're like screaming for their mother, you know, crying for their children, and shit like that and it, it's just it's really good old-fashioned you can blow up everything it's just good yeah. fun and even when you're losing you can have some fun so, so I, I like that jericho tell me something yeah. i i saw some agassi mexicans tweets and it got me a little concerned about that he said like every time he tried to queue up with friends like most of the time it would crash out or people would disconnect like did mm -hmm. that happen to you yeah, I we to actually too, yeah. I couldn't spit I couldn't uh, stream with the uh, spoon and gold glove. They both had moderate Nat, which is crazy in the you know, I've never heard of Nat in on a PC game. Usually it's like Xbox or yeah. uh, PS4. And I don't know enough about any of that to dispute it, but basically they couldn't get into a lobby if either one was hosting. And since OBS disables the overlay, you have to not have it open as a source, so it just fucks everything up if you're trying to stream and, and play with friends. It's just... Uh. And and the mo the worst part is voice comms are broken to shit. If you mute your mic in-game, if you mute your mic output, it mutes your entire... It uses screen Windows. Output. Yeah, it so it uses Windows, Windows. mic... Right, as the like, main volume slider in game, like it's not a different slider. Right. And so, when, but it gets worse. And when you disable your microphone, it will randomly auto be auto on. Like you'll be just have your mic default on in game. You'll be in the middle of a sentence and it'll just pop on. And you have to mash your uh, your uh, push to talk key even though you have it disabled. Yeah, and it'll turn off. It's just awesome. It's a it's a one PC <laughs> issue. For sure, Co. You you probably won't run into that. Since yeah, I was gonna say like as a as a two PC streamer, it, it like was most of those issues are centered around a one PC thing. Then I think oh, so. Are they? 
I think okay. so, yeah. Because a lot of time you can just mute in game completely and then never have to hear it at all and you're just sitting at team speak or whatever. But for one PC, that's that's the fucking worst. Like, I guess. Yeah. And it, like, I mean, the biggest, uh, that was like the worst infomercial tagline ever. <laughs> like, but wait, it gets worse. <laughs> yeah, it gets worse. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Plain. I definitely ran into the issues on... on uh, People, we would, everything would work fine for one, and this is the normal issue. Everything works fine for one game, and then it goes to load the next map or the next round, or I guess the next map, and that's when someone drops. Yep. Uh, and, and they'll still be loading in like a loading screen, and you'll be in the middle of the first round, like, wait, what the fuck? You're not in here? Yeah. And I think it is a host issue because that was happening to me and uh, in Scoots uh, and Gmart when we were playing, and we switched to, I was hosting originally. And I have a moderate NAT. And we would switch, I think, to Scoot's hosting. And his is completely open or whatever. And it would work fine. No one would drop. Right. So I think mm. that's kind of how... I think that's the workaround. I, I don't... It, it's really fucking shitty that in 2015, PC gamers are having to deal with this. Like, they, right. they, I can't make a, a an excuse for them because it's just fucking the worst. <laughs> and I agree. But the game, if we're going to if we're gonna do the same shit we did with uh, Xenover, Xenoblade, Xenoverse is a better game than Xenoblade. Uh, Xenoverse, uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Fuck that all up. Uh, no. Basically, um, you know, the game is really fun. If you can ignore all of that, I have a lot of fun playing very casually. Like it reminded me, it reminded me of of old Rainbow Six Vegas. You know, I'd go over to my friend's house and we'd play, and you know, that was really fun. It just kind of, it's not as serious as playing Counter Strike, but it's yeah. not as run and gunny as playing and like distracting as like playing Call of Duty. So. Was Vegas the one with the MLG level? Yes, I don't okay. remember. For whatever Vegas reason, was I the one that Vegas was the first one that had customizable like armor and loadouts and shit. Okay, all right. I think that was the one with the MLG level. Well, like today, for instance, you know, when, whenever I I'm playing a game, especially one that I'm just trying out or something, I kind of go for I look for things that I maybe haven't seen in other games, or you know, it makes me feel a particular way that maybe others didn't. And like one of the things I really liked about Six today is I wasn't I don't know if they changed it, but the rounds are not that fast. So if you're on defense, for instance, and you see that two minute mark, when you park you know, especially if you're near the objective, something's going to happen in two minutes. Right. And like for me, like I at one point got parked in a corner with a skylight above me and a door. And I was like sitting there counting it down. And I was like, okay, we're at 145. <laughs> okay, we're at 130. And I peek around the side and then I look up and be like, okay, okay, 115. And, and it was really cool because it, it kind of gave that little bit of, of you know, intenseness. That, I mean, frankly, a lot of times are just kind of, it gets lost in a lot of games like this. Like in a, in a run and gun, like, like Battlefront, for instance. <laughs> There's, there's. You oh God, just went up and smashed the wall as your teammates playing the C4. He's like, "Fuck it!" <laughs> Break through. Okay, oh, full hilarious. disclosure. I had no clue what I was doing at the beginning. <laughs> of the game. At one point, I was running around inside the house, bashing out the windows, going, "I'm helping!" And you know, like I had no clue what was going on for like the first bit. But I mean, it was it was cool. It was really cool. I it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to playing it again, and uh, I kind of hope it has that lasting appeal. I see. Um, I don't know how long it takes to unlock everyone. I'm assuming it takes a little bit of time. It takes a good amount of time for sure. Yeah, and that's and that alone is kind of cool. And then I just learned today. I didn't know you could mod uh, the weapons too. So yeah. that's is that does that cost renown? The same stuff that you use to unlock the other stuff. Yep. yep. Oh, cool. Okay. The only well. thing that's the cash, the whatever the cash name or the cash points, it, it's all uh, cosmetic, just mm -hmm. like CS:GO. Well, the scopes and stuff you can buy for the gun are right. You correct? No, you, yeah, you, those are those are with renown points. Okay. Um, yeah. To to echo your point, like it's cool when a game promotes like tactical play without ever saying play tactical, like just the gameplay itself. You want to actually play with some thought into what you're doing rather than just like, I'm going to run in this area and shoot that guy with my revolver. Like that type yes. of shit. So. Also, I don't know if I just got lucky and there's a good chance that I did. Cause I only played a couple hours, but I got to say that I was really impressed with like the random people I was playing, like immediate teamwork. People were telling me like what to do. They were helping me. They would be like, like, Hey, like, Hey, Co, I dropped some armor, turn around and pick that up. And I'd be like, Oh, okay. You know, like they, it was, it was a very much like, Let's help them so our team wins, kind of feel, which was uh, which pretty cool. I, I was I was digging that too. I yeah. always like it when kind of games 
promote that kind of thing, like you said, without really throwing it at them. It's not forcing you to do it. It's just clear that if you help your team, that it, everyone's going to win in that case. Again, very opposite of like Battlefront and stuff like that. And like when I play CSGO, you know, like people are saying CSGO in chat and CSGO. I, I, did, I didn't feel that way in CSGO. Like I'd, I'd always just. You will. If you times. played a little bit more, you would. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. Well, I played it, you know, awesome. a good 40, 50 hours. But I, I just think that CSGO is the only game. I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think that CSGO is the only game, though, that has a culture that is very against no mics. It, so much so that if you queue up for ranked and may, the majority don't have a mic, people are going to get pissed at you. You're like, how, how are you expecting to play this game without a microphone? Like, you're going to take five seconds to type shit out. So, um, and I and I said earlier, if you remember that, I got into a lot of games where there were no where there was nobody talking, which sucks because this game does in for Rainbow Six, you mean? yeah, for Rainbow Six, yeah. yeah, and it can happen in every game, you know, it can happen in Dota or it can happen in uh, in League. You get uncommunicative uh, teammates, but uh, I mean, you're it's you need to have people who are in voice chat here, and so as long as there are people getting in the majority of the games with voice chat, that's cool. But it just kind of sucks that it's not. I don't feel as urgently like teamwork oriented in Rainbow Six. It's kind of just like set up quietly and do your thing in your corner. Yeah. But you, it sounds I like you had some that. good teammates. I, again, I've only played like I've only played the release a couple hours, so maybe yeah. I just got lucky, you know. But I'm gonna. I I, I hope didn't... to have experiences like yours. <laughs> <laughs> I I gotta say though, I didn't I didn't plan on playing Rainbow Six. I planned on passing on it. But now that I've given it a couple hours, I definitely will be streaming it again, which was a was a pleasant surprise for me. That was cool. Yeah, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Uh, Jericho, what about you? Anything else besides? I saw you played a uh, a baby simulator on YouTube the other day, <laughs> and I, then uh, I think you like killed the kid or some shit. Yeah, it was like a murder, a baby murder. Oh, uh, that sounds that's video great. game. Uh, not really. I mean, no, it was great. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Happy holidays. Uh, it is, yeah, it's called uh, Who's Your Daddy? And basically you pay, it's just so alpha. You play this janky ass game in this house where you're a parent and you have to prevent your child from killing itself. The baby is controlled by another player and it goes around opening cupboards and trying to eat batteries and trying to drink bleach and trying to put itself in the oven and lock the oven and you know Do you mind if I show a little bit of the video? Yeah, no, go for the video. And I mean, it's just absurd. I mean, the animation All right, ridiculous. that's all we're going to show. <laughs> no, it's not naked. It's creepy as fuck. What the fuck? The baby looks like uh, it looks like One Punch Man. Yeah, it does. With somebody. It's just the worst. But it's funny. It's just one of those games where you're just like somebody took a lot of time to create this. I'm just going to appreciate it at face value. And it's just uh baby suicide sim. Nice. Yeah, look at that thing. How creepy yeah, is that? that? Every so every good. second uh, that that thing looks at you is... She's uh, going to kill me with the... Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm skipping around too much. I, I'm, oh, so wait. Are you playing as the baby now? Yeah, now I'm the baby. And I'm trying to push the chair so I can go drown myself. And she's going to help me drown myself. At this point, we were just trying to kill ourselves. Nice. Yeah, that's oh, great. So that's not the object of the game. No, the object of the game is it's supposed to be a competitive don't let the baby murder itself game. Um, no, they should just say fuck it and make a kill the baby mode <laughs> right i mean that's what this is though. it's just trying to be creative like i think she drops a fork on the floor and i electrocute myself in a socket uh it's really good great great fun for all ages it looks it looks good yeah if you guys want to watch yeah, the like, full video go check out jerica's youtube for that uh, uh play a little bit of blobs i saw as well yeah blobs <laughs> has uh made its way into the rotation um do you guys have yet are you guys playing call of duty at so all? I played briefly on the PC right before I left for Thanksgiving. I played about three hours off stream. And then tomorrow I'm going to play through the, the campaign co-op. Uh, but I played a little bit of the beta and it seemed like Call of Duty. But I, I feel like the PC version. Are, are you playing PC? I am playing PC. It seems like it's actually like Summit was talking very favorably about it. It seems like it's uh, pretty good. For the first time I've ever, uh, I've ever like uh, actually invested time into a PC version other than Call of Duty Force PC uh, version. This one is the first one that actually doesn't feel like a straight up crap port. Like wow. uh, the last couple have been really bad. I mean, there's been no support, next no support. Uh, you know, Treyarch gave uh, their word that mod support would come to PC in early January. And that is insane for me because I still play Prop Hunt in uh, Call of Duty 4 where you hide as objects. I still play uh, Call of Duty 
ProMod, if there's a server that's live, which is basically a competitive version of Call of Duty, uh, yeah. you know, with a competitive rule set. So, it, I mean, the game itself actually, for once, has all the things you need as a PC elitist to be like, yay, this is not just a shit port. It's got 144 hertz rate, you know, hertz refresh rate. Uh, support it you know it's 4k support it, i mean it's got all the bells and whistles it's just actually not that like if you don't like call of duty you can be like it's not that bad it's pretty good for a fan so i love it um yeah it's what just you do you play the mode where you ban out the items or whatever no i don't play competitive man okay. i'm garbage have you been watching this video i can't do anything uh, I, I, I washed just... i don't know I, that's what i've seen a lot of people playing it and i'm more interested in watching that because it's like that's be never really been done before in an FPS, right? Where the they're obviously going for the MOBA route, and it's uh, well, adds an interesting yeah. dynamic to it. But it's more like it's more like other FPSs are just balanced through and through for competitive, and Call of Duty seems to be traditionally like bottom up balance, you know, balance yeah. for the masses instead of balance for the professionals. Sure. Um, so that that kind of has to lend towards that. I mean, it's not like Counter Strike where there's a inherently great gun that has statistical advantages and they nerf it. It's like the community sucks with the shotgun. Everybody else is good. Let's just keep it the way it is. Gotcha. Yeah. Is there anything uh, like super OP broken with the game or is it all just kind of craziness uh, on different scales? You know, PC, PC has been pretty, pretty ridiculous with uh, shotguns just because the movement system's so fluid that if you're able to run and gun, oh man, you can, you can really wreck face, but Treyarch has always traditionally been very good. I think they've already put out two patches to nerf and buff certain items. Um, I mean, they're 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 doing well. They're putting out patch notes. It's very like Destiny like, where community complains, they take a look into it, post the data, and say this is why we made this change. That's cool. So good steps forward for them. Like they they if anybody's gonna do it correctly, Treyarch will. I mean, they're they're doing they're doing the game justice. It'll have good longevity, I think. Who is uh which which of the three devs is up for next year's launch or release? Do you know? Infinity Ward. Okay, is that uh, with, uh, uh, within the community? Is that you? You say it with disdain. It sounds yeah. There's like. a graveyard. There's like a gravestone with their name on it. Uh, they made <laughs> Modern Warfare Three, which to me was the most bland Call of Duty, not just visually, just gameplay mechanically wise. It was just garbage. After especially with Black Ops Two, you know, to compare it with, holy shit. And then Call of Duty Ghost came out, and that was. That was so bad that I, they had a flash sale for a dollar. They were selling the game for a dollar. Wait, really? The GameStop was or Walmart. It was just like, can you get Thanks this off the Overwatch. fucking shelves? The game was so hey, bad. Listen, listen, That's like listen, AO listen. disc level, man. Let's not shit on the dollar, man. I can get a fucking cheeseburger. That's what I'm saying. I would like, rather have a McDouble than I would a game. That's actually <laughs> like... The for, game steals life from you. I am so actually blown away that a Call of Duty was sold for a dollar. Like, you can Is go it, and look yeah. at those games on Steam, and they're still full price in very many situations. 20 it's, bucks for COD 4, still worth it, by the way. It's still, yeah, COD 4, a hell of a game, for sure, for sure. But, uh, and Advanced Warfare, I was, uh, first game that Sledgehammer, the, the new team, uh, had fully produced. They did well, I thought. A lot of people were like, holy shit, the movement, where everybody's, like, jetting around. Right. Yeah. I thought at least it was different. Like they tried something new and it wasn't bad. It was actually pretty entertaining. So like applause to them. Yeah. But Treyarch just, they fucking rock. They're the best. Uh, so yeah. much For whatever reason, I always find myself playing the uh, single player. <laughs> and I, I'm definitely alone in that. It's not a huge point for Call of Duty. But a lot of people have been saying this one's kind of fun. How you can quote unquote like spec out a character and, and choose different things. Yep to it's, do that with so i'm looking forward to it tomorrow but yeah it's worth a check out you know at the very least they're short enough to where it's not like a huge pain in the ass i think they're like eight or nine hours um, Yeah. so it should be fun and you can laugh at some ridiculous story moments you know yeah like it. it's just like one giant action stupid fucking movie which i'm totally a fan of for an eight hour game <laughs> yeah exactly it's just like get your get yourself some some energy beverages tm and and just sit down and power through it and be 15 years old again yeah for sure that's, that's, for sure it's great it's a great feeling i saw uh skipping ahead of the body that you jumped over to some overwatch i don't think this was announced last week i don't think we talked about it but it's uh it's shutting down tomorrow I'm sad, for, man. Like, a month which is weird 
um, it's not weird. I hope they do some major balances and overhauls and, and really come back with an almost entirely different approach on, on certain champions or certain heroes. And uh, for what it's worth, that time I played for about 45 minutes and then I was like, fuck it, it's not the same. I miss our 6v6s. There's, I, it Those were pretty good. Do, do you know what time it shuts down tomorrow? Not a clue. I assume at, at noon or fuck. at... Because I have shows all tonight. I, would, I do miss the 6v6s. I played a lot over Thanksgiving break. I haven't played. I haven't streamed any since the the first week where we played. Um, I think not that many people like stuck around after that first week once we all split off. Yeah, At least in the streamer true. world. It, in fact, almost all streamers left Overwatch in the first couple of weeks. There yeah. were a few that stuck around. But I have a, I have a question here because that's really interesting because you basically just said Jericho that I'm not playing with friends, so it's not fun to me. Yeah, and that brings up a really interesting point because a when does the is there any word on when the beta opens back up because we have paladins out now battleborn is now pushing itself on steam we're getting stuff for lawbreakers we're getting stuff for uh uh paragon we're getting like by the time it comes back there's going to be literally three plus three to six copycats right behind it yeah. like what's what's going to happen to this at that point it's already like I got to say, I've been watching the Overwatch uh, section on Twitch pretty thoroughly just to kind of analyze how it's going. It it pretty much went how we said it was going to, like yeah. back at the beginning, like yeah. where it's just kind of been slowly tapering off. Gigantic, not through play. That's another good one. So, I mean, by the time it comes back, is it still going to be relevant? I think it's it'll definitely most, be relevant. But yeah, yeah, dude, it's so it's so polished. Like this game is outstanding mechanically. I, I really, it's the fucking best. And yeah, I, you're gonna have to do something special to make me think otherwise. I think they could do with adding some more depth to it. So there's more. I don't know what they can do. That's why I don't design games. I just make fun of them for me not liking them. But like, <laughs> the, I mean, really, it's just, I I love the the game. I loved it when we were playing. I have significantly more fun when we're playing in a group and it's being competitive because it's too. It, there's too much going on to like focus on chat. So it's not like a good passive game. And right. then. There's not a lot going on otherwise, so you're just trying really hard, and maybe your team's not doing very well. I don't know. It's just a game that I had a lot more fun with with the group. I will say that queuing up six feet or, or queuing up as a six man right now pretty much automatically introduces you into the top tier of the game, just because the other six man's queuing. There's not really there's not enough of a player pool within the game to match you against someone of your skill level. It's just right. like there's huge gaps in skill between that. So that's kind of what turned me off a little bit from the game is like we would queue up as a six man and it's like, oh, now you're playing six TF2 pros and you're just going to get fucking obliterated and not have that much fun. Uh, right. And so I'm hoping like when the player pools gets larger, which hopefully that's something they're going to be adding uh, more people to uh, when it relaunches in January, um, I'll definitely jump back into the game. But like queuing is like two people or three people was still a lot of fun. Because I wasn't playing against those six-man like hardcore crews. I was playing against other people that are still taking it competitive, but they're not like fucking gods. Yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna get just destroyed. Yo, um, so get to some uh, Overwatch footage. I'm tired of watching Counter Strike. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, tell me, and and this is to Jericho and at me, JP. Like, are you guys <laughs> watching all these other games, or are you Overwatch? What do you mean like, by are, watching other games? Gotta be, are you like, excited for Lawbreakers? Are you oh. excited for Paladins? Are you excited for Gigantic? Are you excited for Battleborn? Like, are these all, is is it, do you see them as kind of similar? Do you see them all as kind of independent products that you're all looking at, at pursuing and checking out? Go ahead, Jeremy. I think, I, I, I think that, yeah, there's no reason to ever count a game out. Like, you can't just, you can't just be such a fan of something that's been in a beta that you're just not going to check something else out. That said, there's so many of the same type of game kind of like the MOBA rush that happened a couple years ago where everything was a MOBA. Uh, you know, you're going to get this FPS hybrid kind of game style. Or And uh, I think that everything's going to be worth looking at, but I'm going to probably make selective decisions on which ones I actually invest time into playing. Because yeah. with these sort of games, you kind of got to concentrate to be at least a bit above the norm. Otherwise, you're just going to get slaughtered and it's not going to be fun. You know, you got you to gotta focus it's not it's not like you can spread time out evenly across five different games and be good at all of them unless you're a god actually co might actually be able to do that so <laughs> besides you yeah i think i'm gonna have to pick and choose but yeah i see. i i agree like i in terms of if i'm interested in any other ones not particularly like uh, 
I guess the main reason why everyone was super hyped for Overwatch is because Blizzard's name was attached to it. These other ones, like, they have big name developers attached to it, but it's just... Maybe it's just the fanboyism of Blizzard coming through where, like, I want to play Overwatch because I'm such a huge fucking Blizzard fan. And for all these other companies, like, they make alright games, but I don't have the same amount of, like, instant... Uh, like built wanting in respect. to play or built in respect. Yeah, like I don't want to say respect because I respect all these other companies, but if a Blizzard game comes out. They have a track record of, of excellence. Yeah, like if two companies release the same exact game and one has Blizzard's name attached to it and they have another name attached to it, I'll definitely play the Blizzard version of that game 100%. Just because that's who I've sided with, I guess, as a developer. Uh, and I'll, I'll do it blind. Like that's just how much like faith I have in them. That's also not to say that this game can't become the Heroes of the Storm of its genre. Like, I, I think true. Heroes of the Storm is super polished, and it's awesome, and it's just not as interesting as <coughs> Dota or League. Yeah. And, and, that, and that could happen, so that's another reason to not count anything out, just because Blizzard's done it super polished. Blizzard could be like the Honda of, of video games, where it just does everything really well, but it's not, <laughs> it's just like so so plain there's no soul it's just like really good you know right right so, right so <laughs> I, i'd like it not to be the case but maybe that will be the case we'll see with all the games coming out yeah God damn that analogy was so good it should have been mine <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it's gonna be I interesting agree. man because i mean we have they're all like very even, interesting even paragon's website is like yeah you know we're the new entry to the the, the first person MOBA, MOBA genre and you know now battleborn is on steam for 60 bucks it's kind of like all, all these companies are taking the same premise and they're adding their own set of tricks and their own take on it. And it's going to be really interesting to see who's the winner. We've got like the Overwatch with the mega corporation blizzard behind it. We've got the people trying like Paladins, mixing up with the cards and cool game modes. We've got the Battleborns that are trying to go for the like professional look. Like, it's wild. It's very wild. It's gonna. I'm very curious to see, you know, when we're doing this in six months, like which one is going to be, be out. the winner. Yeah, yeah I know. It's like, which one's going to take the crown? I'm guessing it's Overwatch. Just I would because think so. Blizzard. They... Blizzard, Blizzard has quality, man. And they've got Blizzard. Like, I don't even like, oh, I don't, excuse me. I don't even play Overwatch. I still know, you know, it's really well made and it's polished and it's not going to crash on me. You know, like, and I, and I, and I wonder if that's going to carry it, but it's going to be crazy in six months to see like, which there's going to be losers in this too. And yeah. all of them have millions of dollars behind them. Oh yeah. Companies and, it's pretty wild. For I sure. mean, there are some that are inherently like really different. The like Paragon, uh, that's the new Epic game, right? That was the one that was announced uh, at the PSX. It, yeah, yeah. It was the one that I was mean, announced as like Paragon. the last minute or like the last thing, and it's like, you guys aren't ready for this shit. And then they're like, they announce it, and you're like, oh, it's another. Oh, okay, it's another one of these fucking things. <laughs> like, I, like, well, I mean, <laughs> Paragon is going for the the more realistic one. A lot of a lot of these right. companies are deciding to go like the the TF2 style. Sh not saying it's a TF2 clone. I'm, the TF2 style of cell shading, cartoony right. graphics. You know, a lot of them are going that way. Paragon is the more like you look at some which of the graphics cool. and you're like, oh shit. Which like, is important because it's all about branding it as an esport. You're way more likely to get picked up as like a, a cartoony, violent game than you are. Counter Strike or Call of Duty on main television, like the, the there's just you think Disney, you know ESPN owned by Disney is gonna think, yeah, let's get some bloody headshots and legs blown off on ESPN. That'll be great. Yeah, uh, they're not they're not about that. So like when when you have this super cartoony or kind of play, you can just kind of play it off as a, a, a as a as a show. It's way easier to get branded as PG thirteen and be on ESPN or or one of the bigger networks. I do like that they're flat out just coming out and saying, like, here it is. Paragon is a MOBA. They're just saying, shut the it's fuck right up. There. It's literally on their website. Paragon is a MOBA. Uh, they don't know. It's an FPS MMORPG MOBA. <laughs> yeah. No, it's literally Paragon is a MOBA. It's 5v5, three lanes, jungles, minions, towers, cores, experience classic elements of a MOBA from a whole, whole new perspective in Paragon. Um I will say it's kind it. of funny though because like you look on the front page of Paragon, it's like skill matters, where you aim, where you attack, and how you move. Paragon puts you in direct control of the action like you've never experienced in a MOBA. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, have you seen the five other games? <laughs> it's like, yeah. uh, did you play? Oh, no, you don't understand though. Graphics. Well, it is kind of funny though because all of them, all of them coming out are all acting like they're the only one of its kind, and we're taking this genre to the next level. And it's just kind of like, 
you all are. Like this is this is there's like six of you. <laughs> the uh, the cool thing is that this is on UE4. I I would imagine, and it looks. It is yes. on UE4. This is a, they, I didn't actually watch this footage. This looks like graphically looks pretty good. Really good. <laughs> Dude, That's I, one think, of the I think in terms I of it. in terms of graphics, I think Paragon may actually like. It's gonna ha it's gonna be the graphic FPS MOBA coming yeah. out. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I I'm actually I'm planning on checking out Paragon, and I'm, I'm you, hoping we'll see if it's good. I hope it is. Can you imagine this kind of uh, visual experience if you're pairing this with like some Hololens s kind of kind of shit, where you're able to just watch it from you know like on a surface? I, this kind of game where it's where it you know it's it's a third person MOBA esque game is yeah. the kind of game that I would love to see on that. I mean, just want to be able to have that top down view. I hate the, I hate it when they go into first person in a game that you want to get the feel for everything around you as well. Right. That definitely looks very smite-ish, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. 100% uh, smite very much. competitor. Yep. Um, the other thing, too, to jump back to Overwatch real quick, they also did announce that they will never charge for a map or for a hero for that game, Woo! which is pretty crazy because then the revenue model for that game is literally the first purchase and that's it. It better hold. Well, right? Actually, you said no model? Or, or, or no, no, you no, can no, buy no. skins. You can buy skins, yeah. can't you? Okay, that's they're the going, they're going. They're going to lol. That's yeah, basically okay. lol's plan. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Okay, now that I think about it, I was... I was no, they're going to paid lol. Sort of, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A buy-in, a buy-in lol, yeah. A buy-in lol. That's, there you go. Yep. A, a basically cash out. What a, what a weird industry we live in when that's a fucking technical term. Yeah, it's a buy-in lol. Oh, okay, yeah, it's a buy-in lol. I get it. I totally understand that. Uh, it's anyways. pretty wild, man. The yeah. ways that we're making money these days. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird life. Uh, Zeke, I'm going to bring you back into the conversation. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about the PlayStation experience because this weekend... Destiny. That's what, uh, what I'm looking at right now. I'm looking at like all the announcements and stuff. Destiny announced that there's Sparrow Racing League in it, and it comes out pretty soon. I think it might already be out. No, it comes out. It came out today, yesterday. Yesterday is when it launched. Uh, as the Destiny player here, do you still play Destiny? By the way, have you jumped in recently? No, I haven't. I haven't picked it up in a while, man. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Does but this I, get like, you I back? Saw that. I saw that. And I thought that was pretty neat. I think like, it's I've been waiting. I mean, like Destiny players have been waiting for a, a Sparrow race something because when you first hop on the fucking Sparrow, you're like, oh, this is pretty fucking badass. Like, like is and like when I hopped on, I was like, is there racing for that? I mean, does there like something like a quest where you race against something or you have to race to something or whatever? No, it's just a means of travel. But yeah. it's a fucking awesome means of travel. I love the the mechanics of it. It's great. And it's about fucking time they put something like this in there, honestly. Yeah, it looks really sick. I don't think it's going to get me to back on the game. But if you're an existing player, you're probably fucking stoked. It reminds me a lot of the uh, the speed bike racer. But remember how much fun we had doing that on one map? Yeah. I mean, it's not going to keep. It's not going to make me buy Battlefront, but yeah. I, but I mean, it's definitely awesome if you're into if you're into the game. I think it's super cool. Yeah, I was watching uh, Gathalion was was he made a YouTube video about it that uh, if you want to know more information, he basically breaks it down. It looks like there's gear or something for like that you can get for this. I don't know how it improves they the have racing. Seasons. There's seasons. I'm pretty sure there's seasons like racing. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's there, you're probably going to see a lot more stuff like this with Destiny is I think it's going to continue to branch out and, and do more things with the game rather than just like being a shooter. Um, I will say that it's cool that they're adding new content this late into realistically its its life cycle, even though they say it's a 10 year game and they re-released it like four months ago. I, I think still they have to. I mean, no, I they definitely do. Say exactly what you just said, Derek. But I still think that it's crazy that they're like that there's actually that they're actually doing it. I yeah. mean, there's one thing to say you will and be like, uh, but true. they're actually still making new content. So if this, if they keep doing shit like this and sure, maybe, maybe when there's another game's worth of additions, I'll jump back on as right. long as they don't keep charging the, me, which they probably Well, and also you got to remember, like if you're, if you're, I mean, okay, destiny is not an MMO, but it has a lot of things similar, such as your investment in your character. The fact that you can play every single day, the really high steeps of equipment. There's people that live and breathe Destiny. Yeah. And I can tell you as a as a MMO player that used to really love my MMOs, when you've been playing something for like a year, two years, 
and they introduce like a brand new like this has never been done in the game before and you can take your character and sit them on the speeder and that's awesome like that that that's a huge reason to kind of keep playing the game and also to keep you invested going forward so it's great that they're not just adding more maps and adding more raids like they're they're i'm not a destiny player but it's clear they're trying to you know be like hey guys we're we're interested in still developing this we're still doing it yeah yeah, and that's that's really good to see. That's really cool. It's good of Bungie to do that kind of well, stuff. Well, I'm curious to see if the carrot at the end of the stick is big enough for yeah. this. Like, because it's got to be a carrot that involves like the like real game like stuff, like like weapons or you know armor and shit like that. Like that would be the carrot at the end of the stick for for anybody saying like you can get this exclusive piece of armor that's actually good to use in your actual like the they you know, uh, uh, the core game. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading curious. through information about what else was announced for Destiny. I, I think they announced there's no more. It says Destiny, uh, Bungie to focus on special events in 2016 with no plans to release expansion packs. Okay, so so basically them saying they're going to be, they're just going to be working on little stuff like, not, I mean, does this count as a special plan though? I mean, what does I don't know. I don't know. If it, this is a special plan, that's good. If the special plan is like holiday themed event, no. That's <laughs> like, the other comment after that uh, within the article that I'm reading is saying, it's, it said it is widely believed that this is because Destiny 2 will be released at the tail end of the year. So, Can't wait for that because it's probably going to be a better game than Destiny 1 was. For sure. Oh, 100%. Which was a great new IP. Uh, yeah, like that would be a pretty cool thing for them to lead with at uh, at E3 this year. It's like, hey, Destiny 2 is coming out this Christmas. We'll see you there. Like, people would be super hyped about that. Yep. Uh, but who knows if that's actually true. There's, I don't think they actually have any facts for that. Um, okay, so there are, like, new exotics you can get uh, out of this. Out oh, of really? Racing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's a big carrot. They yeah. just need to keep adding new items, not necessarily new worlds just, just new, new anything is really all new. they need yeah, yeah. New, new items that's the word if yeah. it's new then <laughs> yeah. like people like god they're gonna go crazy for it professor broman like there's a reason that years later now when a patch comes out not even a content release you'll see king goth just shoot past yeah, like 10k 30k that's, viewers it's insane that's because people are are still really interested in this it's yeah. they've got like that large invested community and it's not like it's a huge thing, but it's a community that's sticking with them. And yep. I got to say, man, I, I really hope that more companies do what Bungie's doing with this 10-year plan. Yeah. Because that's it's one of the first times I've seen that. And I got to say, if I'm playing an MMO and there's a company going, look, regardless of how we do 10 plus years, we're going to be developing this world. We're going to be adding new things. There's going to be new shit for you to do. I am so much more liable, especially these days where MMOs come a dime a dozen. I am so much more liable to put my time and effort into that MMO. So... It's it's a really good what if, what Someone just made a great point in the uh, in the chat. What if uh, they go to E3 and they're like, "Hey, Destiny Two, it's coming out to consoles and PC later this year." <laughs> like, I would I would nut because that game. All right, and I would two part. That game would love to play it on PC if they made the game more difficult. Because a lot of what makes yeah. Destiny difficult is the fact that you're playing this with a controller and there are enemies that require some nimble navigation or some like, you know, intricate teamwork. And I just, I, it, I inherently thought that it would be just a bit too easy in its current form. They'd have to just bump everything up a little bit just because of your ability to aim better, your ability yeah, to just move around, but I'd be fucking hyped. I would play it all over again. Yeah. And then the Warframe versus though, destiny thing would be hilarious. You too. just brought up a really interesting point. JP Are they they promised the ten year development of Destiny, but in that, have they said that they're not going to make a Destiny two a De because like if they were to really announce something like that, can you imagine what would what would happen to the Destiny community? Like it would it would completely schism it. Like you'd have the oh yeah that's a good point yeah two, yeah the people staying in one like that would be a to be honest if I was a Destiny player and I heard they announced Destiny two I'd be floored pissed off. Well, like that, yeah. Like, how do you how, how do you integrate it? What if they allow you access to the world, but Destiny Two is like the World of Warcraft equivalent, like of an expansion, like you, you bring you your can, character in or something? Right. I mean, so you can you can still or like the paid barrier on RuneScape, you can still access 
uh, people and and stuff, but you don't get the full experience or the graphic upgrade, whatever you want to throw in there with it. You know, so what if it's a sixty dollar f- full game expansion with full game content upgrade? Yeah. But you just don't get access to that. You still get at, the world's the same. That's something I. It's going to be so interesting to watch how they handle that. Yeah. On right. both like yes. a game development level and like a community outreach level, like how they publicly state that. Because like you that, said, I, I didn't even think about the, the schism between the two communities. It'd be like CS 1.6 and Source. Like it's that yeah, level. Yeah, that's, that's actually kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. I, that's what I was thinking too. But because it'd be interesting, like if, if they gave the Destiny one players like a bunch of incentives to come over to two and like you know maybe you could even bring your character or some crazy shit like that or get, get a, a whole free bunch of exotic <laughs> i don't know man I, it it's gonna be it's gonna be cool to watch yeah that, that, that's cool i didn't i, I don't know, know man they've they've typically not done that great on their pr side of things i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure they pissed off some people in the destiny subreddit which is a great like solid community yeah but thing. if you change a shader you piss off people on the destiny yeah <laughs> so, you're right i mean like, <laughs> like those are those guys are fucking brutal when it comes to anything in that game uh, yeah they're protective wise. of that aren't they for sure for sure uh i do want to go well, back to the I game mean, awards real quick we're jumping around so much zeke actually before we do that you <laughs> want to speak what were you no say? i was just gonna say like like it's like destiny is one of those games where where uh i was playing it very religiously for a very long time and i was starting to get into like those those arguments what i like i haven't i haven't got since i've played wow i haven't gotten into like a game so much where they change something or something is just overpowered where i'm just like you motherfuckers yeah i yeah, can't yeah. believe this mother i didn't know and i'm complaining about one little thing in the game and it's just making me just fucking irate. Yeah. So ridiculous. like, I, I get that. it. I Look, man, I get it. <laughs> I get it. One hundred percent. As a as a prior MMO fanatic for sure, and Co does as well. As well, uh, dude. I've I've warned my community. Like, if they release Destiny on PC, like, it'd be crazy. Man, if I could, if I can get a mouse and keyboard in there, like, it's I I played the hell out of Defiance. Yep. And that was, you know, there was no 10 year plan. There was no expansion. In fact, the game arguably was pretty bad, but I loved it. I, hell, that was the first game I streamed on Twitch. Wasn't as bad so. as the TV series. Yeah. I didn't, I still didn't watch that. But, dude, I, I, I really hope, <coughs> I really hope we see one of those products in the Destiny universe on PC. That'd be really cool. It'd bring in a whole new audience. It's just been waiting for it. Yep. Please. Yeah. Uh, I want to give an update to this because we were talking about it during our Game Awards show coverage. Uh, the Psychonauts 2 Fig. It's oh, now yeah. 2.2 million of 3.3 million raised. Uh, right on. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of like backlash uh, since then about this thing. Um, why? Specifically, because why? Because fund our game. Well, it, yes, but also just a lot of people are pretty vocal about uh, Tim Schafer's inability to handle money when it comes to everything he's done in the past. Also interesting that he is, uh, I think, on the board of advisors for this FIG platform that he's using, and the person running it is a previous employee of Double Fine. So there's a lot of like weird conflict of interest things there. Uh, is there going to be any copyright issues with that? I, I probably no, I would think not, or else they wouldn't have launched on here. They're taking a cut, so he gets a cut of the. See, I mean, those questions arise when that when that happens, right? I it, I I. I think it's a huge discussion uh, that I think actually the co-optional podcast covered very well yesterday, and I just want to put more eyes on it because I think it's it's an interesting thing that this is becoming the norm, where Tim Schafer can come out or anyone can come out on, you know, a thing a stage like the the Game Awards, and I can predict that they're about to say, and it's going to be crowdfunded, and here's our Kickstarter link, and it happens. And that's real fucking weird that that's what like a lot of the gaming industry is becoming well, these days. Well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate here a little bit. When sure. you get money from viewers and fans, that's a lot different than getting money from people that expect you to make money. So I kind of understand when people stand up and be like, "Hey, you know, I want to be able to be completely funded by by fans and viewers because that means I get to do whatever the." I want to, right? And I don't need to worry about people coming to me being like, "Hey, is this the best decision if we're going to make money for this product?" Or you know, "Hey, like I, I can see how it would completely reduce you." Now, I'm of course I'm not arguing for this specific instance. I don't know. I I didn't see the podcast yesterday. I don't know the details of it. 
Right. But I have, oh, apparently people are saying he's done it before. So let me make very clear. I'm not talking about this one. But in terms of crowdfunding, like one of the most, one of the biggest reasons I'm so excited for Crowfall and Camelot Unchained is because those are the first MMOs coming out where they're not being bound by the, please make another World of Warcraft so we can make millions of dollars, which is what been like. Right. They're MMO. doing a new idea. That yeah, they actually... exactly. And now they're coming out. It's like, oh, these are fan funded. So, hey, who cares if the game doesn't make a lot of money? It's already made a lot of money. And now we can get a really cool product that maybe isn't necessarily going to be the most popular, but it's going to be really fun for the people that are putting money towards it. It's so also... Kickstarter's gotten, old Kickstarter's gotten real point. weird. It's also what the, the fuck issue with... Kickstarter? What the fuck? You can get, you can back the period of happiness, more Just comfortable period proof Secret undies. Hitler. You Secret can get Hitler. Secret Hitler. Or a leather belt. <laughs> I want all three for five hundred, Alex. What the fuck is Kickstarter? I'm sorry. Can we just go wait? Go to the re go to the new Kickstarter. That like, sounds like the other tab of like Pornhub or whatever. <laughs> it does. Like, That's so let's bizarre. See what we got in the other tab. And then Mystery Science Theater, right there. I funded this. I put I put money. I threw money at this. Yeah. Uh, anything Joel Hodgson says, I will do. What, fucking <laughs> Kickstarter is weird, man. A anyways, what were you gonna say, Jericho? Uh, I don't know. I got distracted. By yeah, that. no, that's distracting as fuck. I'm totally off topic now because fucking Kickstarter is weird as shit. Oh, yeah. Kickstarter sucks because they don't even have to technically guarantee that you get anything. It's just like, all right, we, we, we've got the money. Let's put in the effort. You yeah, know, there's no proof. Like a, yeah. So. Or, or sorry, there's there's no uh, it's you're not, not contract, held to. Not, yeah, you're yeah. not held to contract to create so, something. That's danger. It's a weird thing. But yeah, I, I agree with you, Tuco. It, it's it's both cool and weird that people can now do things on a super large scale when it comes to game development to create things that investors won't back because they're not going to be or do not appear to be a huge commercial success but things like whatever i'm trying to think of a game but nothing's coming to mind that's been kickstarted can exist and actually do turn into a huge commercial success uh or success so it's a weird thing i just hope they stop fucking doing these weird like PS giant fucking press announcements like e how many things do you think at E3 this year are going to be announced and they're going to be and you can go fund it right now like Probably last last year was Shinmu 3 it was huge they just did it again with like Psychonauts I guarantee you're going to see at least two or three at E3 this year it's not a bad thing it's just I wish that would stay off of those stages so we'll see yeah, god damn man I don't know how I feel about it it's still, I mean, but you're right. It's going to become a thing. And I, I don't know if yeah, I really Yeah, it already know. is a thing. Yeah. Damn it. It's just weird. It's weird. like, well, whatever. I think that's a, a longer discussion. Uh, we've only got 24 minutes. We've got to get through all of the stuff that was announced at the PlayStation Experience 2015. Like... Rock Band VR, everyone's biggest <laughs> title. It was to throw up on stage from fright and motion sickness. That was such a weird. Oh man, <laughs> just weird. Just no, I want, I want, I want their the first. I want to see the first story. It's like kid is paralyzed today for crowd diving during a VR rock band session. <sighs> <laughs> they also announced that a new Psychonauts game is coming to PlayStation VR, which I guess Psychonauts, is, or sorry, PlayStation is going to be funding, uh, which is weird, especially when they got the crowdfunding campaign going on right now. Um, Final, oh, I didn't, I didn't forget about this. Final Fantasy VII showed gameplay footage, and mm -hmm. then announced it was like the up and down. They like they did this huge thing. We're gonna show this gameplay. Oh my god, it looks fucking amazing. They're changing the fighting to be real time combat. It looks awesome. We're gonna use Final Fantasy XV engine. It looks amazing. And it's episodic. The real time throws me off more than the episodic. Really? Uh, I, I, I honestly don't care it. about episodic. If, if they released Final Fantasy VII with like updated graphics, but with that combat engine from that era, like I was excited. I think it's totally doable. Do you not? I think it's doable, but I'm more excited that they're going with like a new combat. You want something new, otherwise you're just playing a graphically enhanced version of the game you've already beat. Oh, I'm sorry, it's I'm UE4. Okay that. That's not the Final Fantasy. I know, you, all think, the I know you think that you're okay with that, but I don't think that it will garner. I mean, yeah, there's the rich. There's the risk that there's something that's going to go down where the game is just shit now because they changed a combat feature. But if it's rewarding or you know changes the gameplay at least a little bit, now it's slightly different. You're not just going through the motions that you did years ago. It's like 
I felt Slight, the same way. Slightly different? Like, more, can you get from, changes from the, the core dynamic of the game. Combat? Changes right, the core dynamic. Yeah. I like I'm it, okay, don't get me wrong. I liked uh Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. It was a fun game, but it wasn't Metal Gear Solid. You know, like it 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 was it was a different game. It was a completely different game. Like I, I gotta say, as someone who has always been wanting a Final Fantasy VII remake for ten years now, it's weird to be like, okay, we're re-releasing Final Fantasy VII, and it's basically totally different, just the same story. And I've even heard they're changing the story, so it's like, yeah, there was some rumors of that, like that. So it's like, how is different motion. is uh, I? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm excited to see the changes. It could be really cool, and that's and that's awesome. But I just hope they don't go overboard with the changes. Well, did you see? Like, they're at, there's combat footage of end gameplay crap. I going saw on. some of it, but I've I also heard rumors that that there were different combat systems for different parts of the game. So I I'm not like I've heard that for instance some of the the action combat is for more of like the grinding portions. But then when you snap into like boss fights and iconic fights, that it switches to something different. So. It's really maybe hard. Maybe that's to the way. Maybe they tried to. Maybe make, that's yeah. Maybe that's yeah. Maybe what, that's, what if they do a Cloud versus Sephiroth fight and it's like fucking chivalry? <laughs> like, <laughs> <it's pretty> fucking <laughs> sick. <sad. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd rather they they fucking sanded the table rather than make a new table. Yeah. 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 That, I get that. Way to, that's All right. Way. But again, it's not. It's not like it's going to be bad. It's just. It, it, I hope I hope they don't make it too different. I hope they don't alienate previous fans of Final Fantasy well, VII. That'd be the goal. I think there's the last also, one I played, honestly. It's the last one a lot of people played, for sure. Yeah. Uh, even though 8 was... I'm not actually going to... I'm stopping myself for not starting the Final Fantasy discussion on oh, which is better. Was better. Possibly. I was maybe going to say that. But anyways. <clears throat> you can't have opinions on the internet. You, well, not about Fuck Final you. Fantasy. Your chat's about to devolve into the shittiest thing. It's... It's going places, Zeke, and you don't want please, it to go there. Please, it's my chat. Okay. I'm sure this All is right. not the shittiest deal I've ever you. seen. You, you have been in Zeke's channel before, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. Uh, but I, I think that, like, anyone that is going to play that game, and th this is the fear, or, or maybe not the fear, but this is maybe just how I'm going to handle it. Anyone that's going to play that game and wants to rekindle the feeling, the, the whatever that the first game gave you as a kid, it's not going to happen at all ever like it. That literally will not, you were a younger person game, the, the game and the gaming world and everything about your life was completely different and it will not be as good as it was then. That said, that's why I'm super excited. Why they're going, not? they're going such a but different, why not? that's what I'm thinking yeah. because you know, like there's nothing that's going to make it as, as good as your nostalgia. Exactly. So why not take the gamble and at least have something change so it's not, you're not comparing it to the original every five seconds and being like, I remember, remember this. It seemed more epic. Man, like, Barrett epic. was so much cooler back then. Yeah, <laughs> just like, well, have, have just you, saying, the new Barrett's pretty cool. He looks have pretty you, fucking cool. Just yeah. saying, the new Barrett's yeah. pretty cool. No, well, no have doubt. you guys looked at your high school exes lately? Yeah, I'm sure they're not as yeah, good as you remember. <laughs> yeah, but what if we just polished her up in that old prom dress? She'd look fucking hot yeah, again. Yeah, man, plastic saying. surgery is a great thing. You don't just scrap, <laughs> just scrap her. I mean, put some lipstick on her. I'm sure she'll be fine. Jesus, uh, we're going into a weird uh, discussion. Uh, there's some Uncharted 4 stuff to come out. <laughs> I'm just skipping right ahead. There's, oh, wait. Wait, before we do that. What's did up? Did anyone play the Uncharted 4 multiplayer beta? Yep. Nope. It was super nope. close, wasn't it? No, no I don't, it was I pretty. Don't know. I didn't get in. Or, sorry, I didn't play. I, I, I got an email about it. getting in. I just was like, yeah. I have not yet talked to someone who's actually sat down and played it. I'm very interested in I think it was... uh, Golden Boy was Golden. tweeting that he played it. I did not watch a stream playing it, though. There was very little Twitch presence. Yeah, yeah that, that was surprising. Was, I saw Spam playing it. Spam played a little. Really? Dude, when I looked for it, I couldn't find a single streamer streaming it, and I and I had, I had to go double check it was actually open, and I was like, yeah, you know, that's it's, but that was very weird, very weird. Yeah, I, I don't know. They, the, there was some the the PlayStation uh, experience video was just, uh, it was Nathan and his brother whose name I forget, uh, Troy Baker and whoever Solid Snake was that I'm not, David Hater. I think Nolan North. No, Nolan North. Nolan North. Yeah, not David Hader. Was it really? <laughs> no, it was Nolan North. Yeah, who's playing Troy Baker's brother in that game, and they have like a oh four-minute conversation. Just pull, pull those two names out of hat for everything. Yeah, it's actually really good. Like it, it was a cool trailer. There's no actual gameplay. I, I feel like the 
we're getting kind of to the end of that thing being shown since it's going to be coming out pretty soon uh and it looks it looks great it looks fun um what were some of the other things my my favorite announcement i was kind of saving towards the end because i don't know did any of you play nino cooney do you even know what nino cooney is when i say that was that, the, the, that was a, a JRPG one. Long ass stream of uh, man vs. game playing it. Yeah, that long that was actually very early on in his career when he because he was playing the Japanese well, no, excuse version. Me, excuse me, he played it like for many broadcasts in a row. Yeah, but was that early on in his? Oh yeah, yeah. This was so yeah, that's this, actually that was the first time I ever watched man three years ago. I think because he was playing the Japanese version of that game and translating everything that was being said on screen. Yep, uh, yep. From the the cutscenes and all that crap, and it was actually really absurd to watch. That's like why I started watching Man right off the bat. Uh, but that game, two years ago when it came out, I think it might have been last year actually, uh, was actually my game of the year. So like I'm fucking super hyped for that uh, to come out. It, it's just I, I'm not going to show the trailer because it'll get claimed. But man, they pulled that out of fucking left field. Keep going. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, they pulled that out of left field. I was not expecting a sequel to that whatsoever. Uh, and, like, people went fucking ape shit when that got announced. So, can't wait for that to come out. There's no release date tied to it. I'm sure we'll see more at E3. And I'm sure it won't come out till 2016 or, or maybe the end of the year. But uh, what else? And that wait, that was at the PlayStation experience? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I, must have, I must have scrolled past it or something because I was... Okay, go ahead. Uh, there was some Ace Combat 7 stuff, uh, that's going to be PlayStation VR related. A lot of big fans of Ace Combat. Well, they're not one right. of them. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's enough fighting games that I, I... Well, Ace Combat 7's the, the, uh, the flying game. That, like, uh, has the weird, no, wait, like... what was the fighting game? The fighting game was Street Fighter V, uh, no, that they were talking no, no, about. No, no, the mech, like, it was like a mech one. Are you talking about 100-foot robot golf? Maybe that was it. So that's... That's an odd game. I guess I could show this. I don't think they'll claim this crap. Ah, uh, this is a weird looking game. It was. Uh, I feel yeah. like they they're like, man, that Rocket League game did really well, right? They Why don't like, we play golf? Do robot golf boys. Yeah. Like, somebody was just very confused. Dude, I'll tell you uh, what, man. I am. I don't know what the fuck it is about these about golf games, but I'm a fucking sucker for them, man. Do I not. Love, golf okay. games are pretty fun, actually. I this do. game I love was made game, in like, 99. Any game that even has a golf like thing in it, like like uh, Grand Theft Auto, like I love playing Grand Theft Auto Golf. That was fucking fun as shit. Yeah. Yeah, it Yeah, is. but that's for PS4, guys. It, oh, yeah. It's, it's really excited. I also don't know how they're going to do that with VR. <laughs> mm. with v Wait, that's integrated with VR? It's a PlayStation VR exclusive. With those graphics, you're gonna actually puke. Like, not even joking. Everybody's gonna throw up. Yeah, probably. That's, That's gonna hurt your eyes so bad. Uh, I guess they announced a new Battleborn member for PS4 beta testers and a penguin in a mech suit. I, okay, I'm literally just reading headlines now. Yeah, I, I saw I, the penguin in the mech suit. That was. That looks. Is that a new character? I guess. Uh, I'm reading through this. Yeah, Toby. A mech suit clad penguin was featured in the gameplay trailer. My Has anyone played me. Battleborn? They, they, I get emails constantly like, hey, we got a beta the weekend, but you can't stream it. I'm like, well, not going to play that. Like, <laughs> Yeah, they did, they did it. It was the same weekend as Overwatch beta came out. They did a private, unstreamable beta, and I was like, I'm not going to play yeah. the game. That's interesting. Dude, these days, I got to be honest, man, Like, and, and I will gladly tell this to every company listening right now. If I can't stream it, I'm not interested. You, every, and every other streamer is the exact same. What am I going to do it during my off time? Yeah. It's Great, like we don't you're play games. Gonna, all my first impressions get like not on stream, and I'm going to be even more yeah. bored and jaded when I play it on stream. It's like uh, there's got to be exceptions to the rule, man, because I was thinking the same. It was like, no, nah, I won't. But like, what's your exception, Zeke? If they threw me like a, a playable version, like or like a beta of the fucking new bio, of a new Bioshock, fuck yeah, I'd play it. You'd want to you'd want to experience all that for the first time by yourself and not like Some on sort stream. Of fucking really? loser alone. <laughs> no, Bioshock is one of my favorite series. Period. In fact, it's sad to me that there'll probably never be another one. Unfortunately, yeah, they're probably. But won't. but even like I, for instance, for instance, did you guys hear the news about System Shock Three? I saw that announcement. All it was was that it's a thing, right? It's it's a potential thing, and Ken Levine may work on it. Is it going to be crowdfunded? 
what isn't these days yeah like i didn't i didn't see if it was just like funded and it's being made or if they're gonna open a kickstarter for it or what but like for that i mean it, it, to me it's like if it's more story heavy if there's stuff especially at the beginning of the game that could like blow your mind potentially like that's the stuff that's the exact stuff i wouldn't want to see but zeke like what's 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 your thinking behind it like why would what what would make you want to, is it just because you'd want to play it as i couldn't re i couldn't resist yeah, yeah. i couldn't resist totally understandable. It, it, it's one of those like you can you you, <laughs> like you can open one present right now, or you can wait like ah oh, open the present, give me the present. <laughs> I, that's one of those. That's one of those like ones that I would definitely do. And here's the, the I think part part of the reason is I would still enjoy it just as much if it's if it's true to the series. I would enjoy it just as much second time through with with the chat. Okay, that makes sense. I get that. And it's, it's like, it would be like watching a movie that you fucking love for the second time with a friend. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that, that kind of does it for the uh, the PlayStation experience. I unfortunately wasn't able to watch live, uh, but I enjoyed last year's, and it seems like they announced some really cool stuff this year. Uh, and it seems like that's going to continue being a thing, which is awesome, because I love uh, having kind of like a mini E3 every winter now with that in the Game Awards and seeing new stuff awesome. being announced. Rather than waiting till uh, till July for all the big stuff to be announced, um, Co, you linked me the story. We got about ten minutes left. Let's talk about it. Uh, Wired. Uh, .co .uk yeah. announced that uh, Zubu got fifty five million uh, funding to take on Twitch. Did you read through this? Because I have not read through this yet. I I've only briefly skimmed it, but I think it's it's honestly in this case one of the rare times where the headline I think speaks volumes. I mean the fact that that people are serious. And for those that don't know what we're talking about, uh, there's a streaming uh, s service called Azubu, which has kind of been there for a while, but kind of under the radar. But recently it just got a huge influx of, of funding, like really big influx of funding, massive money for massive amounts of people. Yeah. And now they're starting to get developed. And of course, I'm not saying it's the next Twitch or anything like that, <laughs> but it, it's interesting to see that, you know, we now have some, some people that are, apparently with a lot of money that are seeing some serious opportunities in live streaming. Um, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a very interesting time for that. Biggest takeaway from this article that I can see is that, uh, sharp who I don't know what he does for the company. Uh, Oh, he's the, he's the CEO. It turns out, uh, <laughs> says, uh, we provide a customizable user experience for the broadcasters so they can display a page that uniquely represents them and their interest. Uh, we also have uh, dedicated, yeah, yeah. We also have dedicated esports managers, twenty four seven live customer service, and are developing new ways for players to monetize. So it but seems like they're very esports focused over there, not like variety yeah. gaming, but like esports focused. Very yeah. true. But a, a thing to keep in mind is every time one of these companies pop up, if there's one thing they do really well. That's one potential new thing we may see on Twitch. That's how I think oh, of it too. Is what yeah, what can I, Twitch steal from this? <laughs> yeah, YouTube yeah. gaming, Azubu. I don't see them as competitors to Twitch. I see them as possible reasons for Twitch to innovate things that we may have never seen. Things to make our experience here better. Yeah, uh, I think I speak for most people that are watching right now. It's we bleed purple. We we are not looking for a new Twitch. We're happy where we are. So all these competitors are just potentially going to make where we are even better. Ah man, fuck Twitch, pay me. I'll, I'll go to Azuba for 10 <laughs> Amy, right now. I mean, everyone's yeah. got a limit, right? I'll meet you there. Yeah, everybody's got a limit. Everyone's I mean, that's one limit. thing that Azubu can do. That's what MLG did is they, yeah. they spent a lot of money to basically buy Call of Duty off of Twitch yep. entirely. It's like move all of their stuff off of Twitch. And, uh, and it worked. A lot of the Call of Duty people uh, and a lot of the fans went over the, to MLG and they handled a lot of tournaments and it worked out kind of well for them and now they're all leaving because they're like shit i should have been on twitch so uh i mean azubu with 55 mil could purchase a game or two i mean realistically off of twitch and there you have it you have now a dedicated fan base that's going to be visiting there and bringing traffic totally it's going to cost but, you a lot of money though but mlg was, was well excuse me was mlg established before before twitch yeah but they're live streaming yeah, their live platform streaming platform came out. Only afterwards. for their events. It was not like a platform that you could stream on. It was MLG, the company, had one stream that they could do. Like CMA. Right. But the I mean, but my point my point is like MLG, like I even heard of that, you know, many, many years ago. Oh, it's super old. The first time I'm the first time I'm hearing of it. So like MLG at least has some, you know, some weight 
Azubu, I mean, Azubu did a, did well. They bought uh, uh, CLG for a while, and yeah, so yeah. CLG was basically streaming over there. And I actually watched, you know, Double Lift or Aframu or somebody over there a couple times just because I was like, shit, I want to watch this guy. Okay, I'll go to Azubu. Not saying it was a bad experience or a good one. It just there was not enough there that would make me go, huh, I should check this place often. You know, uh, they just didn't. It wasn't that they did anything wrong. They just didn't do anything exceptional. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, now we're kind of getting into the the random tidbits. Three hours ago, some news came out over at uh, Slash Film saying that Lucasfilm is still looking at Star Wars 1313, which is pretty exciting because if you ever saw that footage that was shown, I think it, I think at E3, like a long fucking time ago, it looked awesome. Uh, it looked real fucking cool. And I'm every- sorry. What is what is it, Star Wars? Yeah. So there's Star. It's Star Wars 1313. This was announced, I think, before like any of the new movie stuff was shown. Uh, and if I remember correctly, it's supposed to follow Bounty Hunter type shit. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that's been uh, said after. It was the concept art, I think, is what was uh, what was shown, um, which is this right here, which looks pretty fucking badass. I'll blow it up. Like that, I'd play a game where you do that. <laughs> that looks great. Nice. Uh, and then shit like that, like that looks fucking awesome. Nice. Mm. Wow. So okay. we'll see. Nice. I hope they do more stuff with that. Speaking yeah, that of looks- awesome, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven in twenty sixteen. Yeah, I saw some news about that as well. Do you know more about that? Other or is that was all? No, that was and I hate saying it, but it sounds like it's kind of a rumor too. Uh, but if that actually happened, oh man, <sighs> that's gonna be the next big one, dude. Did that's you see? Uh, did you see the screenshots for the Blood and Wine expansion for Witcher three? Gorgeous, dude. Yeah, like what? Oh my lord. What? I had no yeah. idea they were adding something that big, like that. That blew me away. I and and Heart of Stone was really good. The Last Witcher Three expansion, I had a really good time in that one. Like, is it just another continent? It's basically an entire new, like, it's an entirely new playable area. They're adding also extra features. Like with the last expansion, um, they added a lot of things to Witcher. They added like an entire new way to enchant your weapons. They added like enchantment sets, like all sorts of things. Uh, oh, but gorgeous. Heart and Wine, or it, Blood and Wine. Blood and wine um, is supposed to be like even bigger than that comparatively. Um, but yeah, it's th- we're hearing nothing but good things about it. Awesome. <laughs> Did we just go to the final screen? Oh, I hit the wrong thing. Jesus, <laughs> I was like, okay, guys, have a great day. See <laughs> yeah. you next week. I start to, I start to check out. I start to check out pretty late. Now, interesting chat chat actually just mentioned the ceo of cd project red disapproved the rumors i have not read that yet that is super unfortunate if that's the case because, oh yeah that was two hours oh yeah ago. yeah look at this another person in my chat just said that too we've been working on cyberpunk 2077 for a long time it's a completely different reality set in the future with corporations more than the great world just to be clear we already have the release date for cyberpunk 2077 plan but we won't announce it until we are ready to start the marketing campaign at the moment we're concentrating on the witcher and don't want to distract users from that product which you're still monetizing makes sense makes sense but yeah, I, I gotta say, man, like from from coming from The Witcher and how much quality we saw from that, the idea of taking that into the cyberpunk universe, oh man, my yeah. my panties are dropping. Just saying, be pretty cool. Be pretty cool. cool. Uh, the last bit of news that we'll cover, just because I think it's hilarious. Minecraft for the Wii U was announced on Monday. Yay! It is now literally on every platform to ever exist ever. Ever. I'm surprised we can handle Minecraft graphics. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I think I'm going to play it now. Yeah, I think that was what I was waiting for, was it to be on Wii before I, I still uh, Zeke, have you ever played Minecraft? I, I, was, uh, I had a broadcast where I was taught Minecraft by a 9 and 10 year old girl. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. Yep, I they taught me how to play cast. Minecraft, and they were very impatient with me. Yeah, as they should be. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I still have not played Minecraft before. Maybe, maybe you know, it might be the right time now to jump in. Now I would love to Wii see U. you play Minecraft, KP. <laughs> that would be that would be good. I'd probably get too like sidetracked. A, like a holiday stream of Minecraft. Yeah, too, I just get way too <laughs> sidetracked with all that. Uh, I think that's gonna do it for the show, though. Jericho, thanks for coming on. Appreciate thanks for it. having me, guys. It was fun. Great guests. Just you guys. I'll Does you uh, 
<laughs> random random question is anyone doing any star wars tie-in with their stream in the sense of like playing any star wars games or anything no, i'm like not that? being sell i'm not selling out JP. you're not gonna sell out is there a new game coming out or something no not at all i'm just uh, eh, i mean i'll hop on if i have a reason to I, I don't know like what i guess you could play like coda or something like that Bully, and and they just patched it not yeah, a couple like few months a month ago, ago like, or two. Yeah. If you if you've never played Coder, now is a great time, man. I, I was wonder if Coder one and two playthrough, but it, there's just too much other stuff. I just wonder if there's going to be a streamer that's going to like capitalize on that. Like I haven't seen him yet. Like it's going to do a huge, uh, I don't know, Star Wars playthrough or some shit. I guess they would have already been started. Yay, Battlefront! Oh wait. Yeah, I think Battlefront. Was supposed to... <laughs> All right, guys, we're announcing here a 24 hour stream. We're all going to be playing Battlefront. <laughs> Oh! Don't explain. make me do it! Yeah, Jesus Christ, that be right. I'm in. Zeke's in. <laughs> Zeke's in. He's Good he's rest. rekindled that flame again for sure. All right, let's do some shoutouts and get the fuck out of here. Co, start us off, please. Sure. All right. Uh, hi everyone. I'm Co. It's uh, it's been awesome. Big thanks as always to Zeke and JP, uh, and also a big thanks to our guest Jericho. It was a ton of fun. Very fun show. Um, I'm Co Carnage. You can find me every single day. I'm currently two years through my four year challenge of streaming every single day on Twitch. Uh, Going to be starting our Bloodborne playthrough tomorrow, Bloodborne plus DLC. Uh, we also have a Mass Effect franchise playthrough coming up soon, Viewer Choice, where you vote on the class and every major decision in the game. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys there. Thank you for tuning in. And a big thanks always to the guest hosts and guests. There you go, uh, Zeke. Some shout outs, sir. What is going on? My name is Zeke the Third. You are on my channel. So if you like what you see here, go ahead and hit that follow button. Uh, I want to thank Jericho for being a great guest. Woo! Maybe oh, the gosh. best guest. No, I the don't know. The best. I don't know. He put JP in his place, which I really liked. Um, Wait, what? And that didn't he said, I think he said, fuck you, Co, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Hey. Um, but uh, as, as always, thank you to Co Carnage and Eat Me JP. But I want to say, uh, new Teespring campaign just started today. I wanted to drop that. On you, if you look right below, got a new T-shirt. If you want to do it, uh, if you want to check it out, it's done by the one and only Torin Two Seven Eight. He's an awesome, awesome artist. You should check that out. Check him out. Excuse me on his website, Torin Two Seven Eight dot com. But just announced today, two weeks for that T-shirt, and it's I'm super fat on the picture, which I love. <laughs> I, no, look, if you look at it, I'm super fat, which I just it's a caricature. It's supposed to be like that. But check that out. Just launched two weeks. That's it. I'm, oh, and I'll be broadcasting after drop frame, drop frames is over. I'll be doing more of the uh, more of the Bloodborne DLC. Maybe we'll get to the end. Who knows? Zeke, what color choice should I go with here? I like uh, I kind of like that uh, gray. The black. The black. I mean, black's. Winning. I don't know. What do you think, Zeke? What's the preferred one here? I I already ordered a couple of shirts in black. I like the black. Okay. Wrong like choice. The, the answer is like all four, against, Zeke. You're not like a salesman, Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> You're not I'd a salesman. Go, but I'd go with I go with women's for you. Okay. Yeah, you, you think the tight <laughs> tight yes. cuz if it was your shape, yes. you're you're very Oh, I'm very hourglassy, yeah. Yeah, very hourglassy oh, shape. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh Jericho last but not least, do some shout-outs, man. Yeah, what's going on, peeps? Uh, thanks for having me, guys. It was really fun. Uh, keep it up. If you guys follow me and not any of these lovely gentlemen, they're all more dedicated to me, and they are all great variety broadcasters. If you guys like Counter-Strike and super casual, entertaining, and uh, very interesting solo cues, check me out. All my links are there. Um, and uh, thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. There you go. All right. Uh, what is next? Are we still... I don't think I'm traveling next week. Nope. I think we're good. Everyone's here next week, so we're good to go. Let's do it, man. We'll do a show. It'll be on my channel. Don't know the guests just yet. Uh, I'll get to working on that as soon as we finish. And then next Thursday, fucking Star Wars comes out, man. I'm going opening night. Are you? I'm flying to San Antonio to see with my family and flying back the next day. <laughs> I'm doing the I same am. thing I did for the last three Star Wars releases. You're not going? Not going. You're just going to wait? <laughs> Haven't seen him. Is that a real life animal? Okay. Oh my god! This is Grizz. Geralt, man. No, I got I'm, Geralt, I'm talking... and Geralt and Grizz. That's some pretty. Yeah, he's good a dogs. good. He's a good little guy, man. He's bottle fed, so he's floppy. He's by the how, no, how Jer he's talking about Jericho, dude. No, both do both are very good animals. My dog's that awesome. cat looks very. Wow, that cat looks super lethargic. Wow, look at, dude. That's awesome. What type of like dog is that? He's a chow chow. Yeah. 
He's just a bro. No, he's a bear. He's a bear. He's a bear. <laughs> that dog left. looks like a stuffed animal. A, he, he's great. about as lovable as a stuffed animal. There. He's my homie. Is that a lot? Like what? I do you like? Anyways, <laughs> I don't I know if you're supposed to. My head. I don't know what that was. I don't know if you're supposed to. I know about stuffed animals <laughs> That's and what love that their was. love their in. Yeah, <laughs> it's a nice cat there. Thank nice you. Cat. Thank you. All right, that's it. We'll see you guys next Wednesday, Rod. Have a good day. Watch our streams. Bye-bye.